Heyo everyone, me should be barking here. This last weekend was Anthrocon, a furry con taking place July 4th to the 7th in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and I got to attend this year. This was my first con and first time on the East Coast, and it was easily the biggest con I'd been to. This year's Anthrocon theme was Anthrocoaster, and it was supposed to be themed around roller coaster parks. AC was only my third con, with the first being Spoke Anthro 2019 with 248 people, and the next being Philandia 2023 with a little over a thousand people. So, per tradition, it's time for my recap video. I'm gonna go over my activities at AC in order, then I'll answer some some more broad questions. How was my time? How did the con as a whole go? What's the deal with the reg lines? And would I recommend AC to anyone? Well, let's dive on in and find out. Do you like watching furry streamers and supporting wonderful causes? Or are you a streamer yourself and want to make a difference? Either way, be sure to check out Papa Barks 2024 and the fight against ALS. This event hosted by Marks Barks will feature various furry streamers, myself included, raising money for the ALS North Carolina chapter. No! Ow! Ow, this is my ass! Stop biting my ass! There's also chances to win various prizes if you donate, and hey, who doesn't like winning prizes? Be sure to check the link in the description to learn more, and if you're interested in seeing who's streaming for the cause, be sure to check out the Papa Barks team on Twitch. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll join in the fight against ALS. So, uh, kinda awkward, but I actually wasn't at Anthrocon Thursday. My boyfriend Argo and I were flying together and he wasn't able to get Wednesday off, so we had to settle with arriving a day late. That said, considering our next topic involving today, that might have been for the better. So yeah, my Thursday was spent packing for AC and getting ready to fly out towards Pittsburgh. Truth be told, I was incredibly anxious. I'd only been to smaller cons, and this one was set to be the biggest in-person furry con ever. It would definitely be a whole different experience, one that I wasn't sure I'd be ready for. I suck with big crowds, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But this is the con that all of Argo's friends go to, so I was excited to tag along and meet all the goobers he's constantly playing games with. But enough about me, how was the con going? Well, uh, they sure were capturing one aspect of theme parks, to put it simply. I'm sure you all saw the post on Twitter. Incredibly long wait lines, with lines wrapping all around the convention center and then some. People reported waiting as long as four hours for their con badge, maybe even longer, and all in the Pittsburgh humidity. Yeah, by the way, the humidity was f***ing awful. It didn't matter if you pre-regged or were paying that day, both lines were miserable and long and resulted in many angry people. What also didn't help was them closing reg early so their volunteers could go home on time. Now, this part has a lot of misinfo, so I'm gonna try and do my best to get the facts straight, but it sounds like they cut people off from entering the lines at a certain point roughly 20 to 40 minutes before 10 p.m., which was the actual cutoff time, so that the people checking the badges wouldn't be there all night. This got thrown through the internet wood chipper and became, oh, they closed Reg an hour, two hours way early on. In all honesty, I don't really disagree with AC's decision to cut off the lines a bit early. It's not fair to the volunteers to be stuck there way later than they anticipated when they were doing this for free. I know it sucks if you were one of the people turned away, but it unfortunately was a lose-lose situation, because odds are the lines wouldn't have stopped for a very long time after 10 p.m. There's a few potential solutions we'll discuss later on in this video, so for now, let's move on. Unfortunately, we're not moving on to the best news still, as due to the rain, the rooftop section of the con was closed off from those who were able to get their badges. Thursday was July 4th, and the rooftops are a wonderful place to gather and watch the fireworks, but due to the weather, it had to be closed off, so people were SOL on that front. USA! 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 Long story short, it was raining. It was raining really hard. Unfortunately, I don't have much more I could discuss, as again, I wasn't there. I was busy flying from 5 p.m. PST to 10 a.m. EDT. That's 14 hours of planes and airports, by the way. We had two layovers, and each of them were three hours, so getting here was rough. Oh boy, it's Friday morning of Anthrocon, except, oh no, we're not at Anthrocon. <laughs> we're in, a uh, we're in Atlanta. It is like, what, six, seven in the morning? It's almost seven. Okay, it's almost seven. Uh, we got here at five, roughly. Um, we've both been awake for about 24 hours. We... I don't know what else to say, man. <laughs> It sucks, get us out of here. Yeah, after being awake for 24 hours, the vibes were abysmal to say the least. But after one more flight, we arrived at around 10 a.m. and were greeted by Dex and Patchy, two of Argo's close friends. They picked us up and headed back to the hotel, and this video right here is crazy to watch back. The entire time leading up to Pittsburgh, you're going through pretty dense trees all around. Then you enter a tunnel, and then out the other side is a bustling city in its entirety. It's one of the coolest things I'd seen on the road, and it really built up the excitement for me. Anyways, we got to the hotel and got settled in, and Argo and I headed off to registration. Before that, though, I gotta introduce you to the roommates. We were in two bigger suites in the embassy. In the first suite was Dex, Camo, Zoopy, and Patchy, and in the second was Don, Lore, myself, and Argo. The layout of these rooms was really nice. It was kind of like being in a little apartment for the weekend. Okay, now that I've introduced the roomies, let's check in on registration, shall we? 
Oh, are you? <laughs> we gotta do this at least. Oh! Oh my god, he found the strat. Oh, shit. Yeah, Reg on Friday was a breeze for us. We got our badges and we're in and out in like five minutes. Don't worry, I still got the line con experience. More on that later. Anyways, after that, I took a much needed shower and headed out to meet Solace the Wolf. Solace is a great friend of mine and a co-host on Bark Bark Meow. So I was really looking forward to meeting him at this con. Him and I headed to the convention from his hotel at the Omni and he showed me around the con space while we suited together. I got recognized quite a few times, especially on this first date, which I know I'm a broken record at this point, but it's just insane to me. One of the people was a furry named Harlow who gave me these chocolate wafer things as a gift. Now I'm not one to try new things often, but since they were a gift, I gave it a shot and let me tell you, these were so good. Seriously, I took them back to the room I was in and passed to the container around so everybody could try it. So again, thank you so much Harlow for that treat. We then made our way to the dealer's den, which was huge. There were so many dealers there. I couldn't believe how much talent was all in one room and neither could my wallet. I spent way too much money. One of those dealers was Casbun of Top Dog Studios. We first met at Furlandia in 2023, but I was just as excited to see them and their husband Jack again. The artist Alley was also in there, but it felt very stuffed to the side and neglected, and it seemed like I wasn't the only one with that opinion, but more on that later. One of the artists there was my friend Rezzy. We'd been friends online for a bit now and were super excited to meet each other. So excited that we forgot to take a picture. Oh no, now we have to meet again, no. After no joke four hours in the dealer's den, we finally headed back to Solace's place for dinner. Argo was asleep this whole time, by the way. He was exhausted after the flights. Anyways, after food, I headed back to my own hotel to take a quick nap before hitting the waterfront with Argo, Camo, and Dex. It's night two, or no, f it's night one. Well, night Hi. two, night two, because we missed night one, but by night one. We're on our way to go meet Solace because he says he has something cool to say. I don't know. Misha, say what it is. I, I don't f***ing know. I wore Rasko for this part, which will be a bit of a theme this con. Misha during the day and Rascal at night. It was hop in that Friday. There were so many furries partying by the waterfront and having fun. It was basically like an outside rave. They had the indoor rave going on, but down by the waterfront, it was just as popular. I wanted to stay longer, but after being awake for 36 hours minus an hour nap on a flight and a half hour during the day, I turned in at around 11 p.m. That said, Zoopy and Patchy stayed out and about until 3 a.m., so rest assured the party kept going on well into the night. Date? F uh, Saturday. Date three? It's our day two. Yeah, our day two. Yeah, it's our day two, but I think technically like day three or four or some shit of Anthrocon. I don't know. People get here whenever the f they want. I think the con officially started on Thursday, but that's not the point. Yeah, we're, we're, we're here at Anthrocon still. It's Saturday. Today's the first suit parade. Yeah, Argo's here. Hello. hello. It's There's Argo. Argo. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> uh, this is the first suit parade and then the block party today. So yeah, looking real forward to those. And I guess uh, future Misha will tell you if those went really good or really bad. But so far, it's been a blast. Bye. Bye. God, it felt nice to sleep in a bed. A bunch of us roommates went to get breakfast in what had to be the stickiest hotel buffet I've ever been in. The entire floor was sticky, the tables were sticky, God, even the salt shakers were sticky. How, how does that even happen? Rant aside, Argo and I headed down after eating to go back to the dealer's den where I got even more stuff. Don't worry, I'll show the haul later in this video. We didn't have as much time to look around because I had to line up for the fursu parade. It was my first time at Anthrocon, so it felt right to do the parade. This f***ing sucked. The parade itself was fine and all, but god, getting there at 1.30 and having to wait two hours to walk was borderline hell. There were also people who got there before me who marched after me, and I don't even know how that happened. Needless to say, being in the first suit parade really made me feel the amusement park theme the most, having to wait in lines for hours for something that's over in 10 minutes. I do want to shout out Cider and Zephyr for keeping me company while we waited. They mentioned they watched my videos and we got to chatting and clicked pretty well. I couldn't find my friends before lining up, so being able to make new ones is great, and what cons are all about. I also got to meet Dizzy the Bat. They've done tons of wonderful commissions for me over the years, and I'm so impressed with how they all turn out. I was unfortunately in a rush and couldn't snag a photo, but it was amazing to meet you for even that brief time, Dizzy. After the parade, I headed back to my hotel to strip out of my suit and pregame for the block party. The zero reminder to drink responsibly. After a bit, we headed to Condado's Tacos and got some food and, yes, more drinks, and then I headed back to grab Rascal and went to the block party for a bit. While there, we met Pip the Badger, a good friend and avid listener of Bark Bark Meow. We also ran into Arreo and Spark, who are great friends of Argo and I. Goot and I headed back to the hotel after a bit and accidentally sobered up before getting an invite to go play drunk Pokemon TCG and, well, how could we refuse? Arreo and Spark were there along with Azur and Azurel. So for the second time that night, we got drunk and played Pokemon until about 3 in the morning before taking a shuttle back to our hotel and turning in for the night. Sunday morning started a little sad as all of Argo's friends were checking out today, so we had to move our stuff over to Solace's room for the last day. After helping out, I headed off to the convention space. It is Sunday at Anthrocon. 
Um, I'm on my way to a doggo meetup. I am so f***ing late because <laughs> I had to move my stuff to uh, Solace's room. Uh, Misha, put a picture of Solace right here if you haven't already in the video. Uh, but yeah, last, last full day of AC. It's a little bittersweet, but hey, we're going to make the most of it. So yeah. The doggo meetup was a lie, by the way. Seriously, I swear it was on the schedule, then when I checked to see what room it was being held in, poof, it was gone. I was sad too, because this was the one meetup I was able to make it to. I'd missed the canine and fox ones, and I was really looking forward to it. But I did use that time to record a few videos and take a few pictures for this video, which you've seen throughout. After a little bit, Argo and Solace joined me in the dealer's den for our last round of buying things we definitely didn't need. I'm showing these things off now, but seriously, they had something for everybody. There were so many dealers that I didn't really have an interest in, but I know that what they had was right up someone else's alley, and I think that's awesome. The badge at the beginning was commissioned by Argo and done by Blue Clovey on Twitter. He had a matching one of himself playing the clarinet. We commissioned these like a week before the convention, because we forgot to get them earlier, but Clovey was amazing and got them done in time even with the time crunch. There's also some extra trinkets some people gave me, like the extremely small Zoid sticker, the dice sticker, and the cheese wedge. Again, the artist alley had so much stuff, and I got things from all over the place. There were so many stickers, pins, keychains, prints, everything. There were Dockies as well, but I didn't pick any of those up this time. There was also a pretty small NSFW section, but it felt pretty tame. Like, some of the stuff in the main vending hall felt more lewd than the NSFW part. I don't know why that was. So I didn't get anything from there, and even if I did, you wouldn't be seeing it here. <laughs> With that all said, hopefully I've rambled on long enough to show off all the merch, so let's continue the recap. During my shopping escapade, I ran into Iceberg, who is a pink otter, and oh my god, she is tall. Now, I'm not the tallest puppy on the block myself, but I mean, look at this. I look like a child. <laughs> she was super nice, by the way. We're both friends with Areo, so I was glad I was able to say hi. We also ran into Coda, a friend of mine through TikTok. He said I was shorter than he thought, which... Ouch, buddy. Jokes aside, he was a delight to chat and hang out with, another fur I was really hoping to run into. Solace Goot and I went and got lunch and got our setup ready to record a live episode of our podcast, and let me tell you, I love how jank this turned out. I didn't want to pack a mic stand and Solace forgot his, so we improvised with a red solo cup, packing tape, and an ironing board while we sat on beds and chatted about our con experience. That episode comes out today at 4pm Pacific if you want to listen to it. And then, and then I gave you a hug. Yes. Wink. No wink. We could. We could add. No. Uh. <laughs> it was during this recording that we got the final numbers. 17,639 people attended, and over $100,000 was donated to charity. Not to mention 3,371 suitors were in the parade, myself included. That's where this picture came from, which, no lie, might be the best picture of me to date. After recording, we headed to a Bark Bark Meow meetup we were holding, and definitely weren't late to or anything, where we got to meet up with Pip and Harlow again, as well as Kenny, who's popped into my chat on Twitch a few times now. Truth be told, I wasn't expecting a single person to show up, so the fact that we had four people show up was awesome. <laughs> After we broke from that, I got a picture with the iconic Fiona and walked around the con space for a bit. I got to meet some more fans as well and even ran into Orion, a furry friend who's local to me. And of course, I forgot to take a picture. I also met Rike. We've been fans of each other's content. It was cool to chat with them about that as well as just getting to know what they're like outside of content. I got to message them about their workout routine because bark, bark. I, I mean, <clears throat> anyway. It was around here that somebody by the name of Renby came up, excited as ever, and said they had fan art for me. They whipped out their little sketchbook, tore out a page, and handed me this. And truth be told, this was better than anything I bought at the dealer's den. I barely kept my composure long enough to say thank you and hug them, and... Argo and I had to find a spot away from people, cause I started crying. It just tugged at the heartstrings in all of the right ways, and those emotions spilled out then and there. Somebody made this for me. They'd sketched all these little doodles, then almost missed me, but on the very last day ran into me to deliver it. It sounds like a dumb thing to cry about in the moment, but even now writing about it and thinking about how loved that made me feel, I'm holding back tears. I guess in the moment, it really hit me that people do watch what I make, and they genuinely do look forward to the videos I post. My self-esteem is pretty awful and I'm always doubting myself or tearing myself down no matter what I'm doing or what I make, but that doesn't mean others don't enjoy it. This entire weekend, people came up to me to say hi, take pictures, and were absolutely ecstatic to meet me. I don't really know what I'm trying to say here, but long story short, it all hit me and overwhelmed me with the warmth and love of the little community I've built making content for the past four years. Renby, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for these doodles, and I'm gonna cherish them forever. <clears throat> okay, sorry, got <laughs> got a little personal there. Unfortunately, right after this touching moment came one of the worst things to happen to me at a con, arguably ever in my life. So we're ending Anthrocon night with tacos and nachos. And this <laughs> eats one of my tacos right out of my bag. The bag labeled 
Misha Barkin, he takes one of my tacos in cold blood. And he's, the yeah. was on the other side. You it your, your label was also on the other side. That's right. My own boyfriend stole a taco from my bag. It really is the people you hold close who have the best chance to stick the knife in your back. Nah, jokes aside, he didn't mean to, and I, I just took one of his in return. The tacos were delicious, by the way. I highly recommend that place. Also, eating tacos on the floor of a con space was kind of a vibe. I don't know why, but there's something special about just sitting down against a wall and eating food with your closest friends that really shapes a good con together. After this, Solace headed to the waterfront while Gucci and I had a completely normal sweet tart like candy. Just a couple though, cause we weren't really that hungry. I threw on Rascal in a cute little outfit and headed to the dead dog dance and oh my god. I'm gonna slap a quick epilepsy warning here if you're unable to watch flashing lights, feel free to skip to the timestamp on the screen. This was by far one of the coolest things I've ever attended. I'd never been to a rave before, so I was blown away by all the lights and music that was going on around me. The DJ I showed a second ago and what you're listening to now is V for Vienna, and their set was easily my favorite of the ones I heard. I just... I, I, I just don't know what to say. The whole damn thing was a vibe and a half. I am not a rave type of guy, but I was jamming out. We did have to leave at the top of the hour because oof, ow, suiting is hot, and it was here that we ran into a Rayo and Spark again, and I finally remembered to take a picture of us together. I also ran into Sora and Sky. They were a furry YouTuber like me, and we've been friends for a very long time. I know I sound like a broken record again, but I was so excited to meet Soren. Also, Soren, please make videos again. You have such a positive vibe, and I love it so much. We headed up to the rave one more time and met up with Solace when the rave ended, so Argo and I headed back to the hotel and turned in for the last night of Anthrocon. And the next morning, we had to pack up and leave Pittsburgh. It was bittersweet to say goodbye to everyone, but good things must come to an end. And besides, it's not goodbye, it's see you soon. And to everyone mentioned in this video and many more, I cannot wait to see you again. And you'd better believe you're getting the biggest hugs imaginable. So how did the con go overall? There were some bumps in the road for sure, but it was still an overall success in my opinion. I've seen tons of posts saying how AC was the best con they've ever been to and how they had the time of their lives. There were some negative experiences at AC of course, but the overall vibe was that of a positive and successful con. Funnily enough, the people being the loudest about how bad AC were were the people who didn't even go and had no intention of going. It's almost like we can't listen to everything we see on social media. Now that said, there are some controversial things that happen that I do feel need to be addressed as well as some potential solutions, and we'll start with the ones I mentioned earlier. This was easily the biggest thing that will stain people's memory of AC. I went into detail about it in the beginning of the video, but to recap, people had to wait two to four hours in a line that wrapped outside into the Pittsburgh sun, and some people weren't even able to register that night. Now there have been some ideas on how to remedy this thrown around, one of which being to mail the badges before the con begins. I do like this idea, but it's got a lot of issues as well. The biggest one is that trying to ship badges for people who pre-reg would be expensive as well as just a logistical nightmare for people volunteering to help out. Not to mention you could just give your badge to somebody who isn't you, such as someone banned from attending. One of the steps when checking in is to show your ID, and I'm not entirely sure how you do that with delivered badges. That said, there are cons that do mail badges, so perhaps they're doing something to resolve the issues listed, and AC can copy those tactics. I also want to mention that those who couldn't register Thursday due to the reg line should have Thursday refunded to them. Anthrocon has been pretty radio silent about how they're going to handle this, and truth be told, we might never hear about how it'll be addressed, if at all. It's one thing to miss a day you paid for at your own fault, but when it's the fault of the convention, that's the whole another story in my opinion. I mentioned this quick, but compared to the dealer's den, the artist alley was kinda underwhelming looking. Now I'm not saying the artists were bad, far from that, but the tables they were given to draw at were far from the dealer's den and weren't super decorated. This is apparently partially due to there being a height restriction on the displays, which was not in effect or at least a lot higher for the dealer's den side. Why you may ask? I, uh, 
I, I genuinely don't know. I can't think of a reason why a height limit would be needed for just the artist. That just seems kind of dumb. There was also an issue with them being far away from the dealer's den, which I get you want the two to be a bit separate, but this was pretty far. I think the solutions here are pretty cut and dry. No height limit for the artist alley decorations, proper labeling to show them where the artist alley is, and scoot them a little closer to the rest of the vendors. So per tradition, there are raids going on upstairs, but down below is what's known as the waterfront, where people will set up outside and have a big old party of their own, with DJs, neon lights, and much more. If I'm understanding correctly, this is associated with the con, but is not an official activity. That said, it usually happens without any issues, but this year on Saturday during setup, con staff came down and asked them to shut it down. As far as I know, a specific reason wasn't given, but there were rumors that it was because last year was too loud, or because of the activities involving things or people being in the water the previous night. Either way, I think getting the event added as an official dance is a good first step if it isn't already. Next is the issue with the noise, which is honestly understandable. Turning things down a bit as it gets later would help with this, and maybe even having an earlier cutoff time would solve this issue. Lastly, I know it's fun to let loose and be wild, but please remember that we are guests in this con area and staying in Pittsburgh for a weekend. We need to be respectful and mindful of activities, as doing things such as throwing sex dolls in the river isn't exactly a good look for us furries. I also want to add that even though there wasn't a DJ, the waterfront was still a really nice vibe. I enjoyed hanging out with friends down there, and even on Saturday and Sunday, it was still the place to be late at night. Oh my god, it's Misha! Hi! I know you don't know me, can I just say hi and get a hug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the big question. Did I have a good time? I didn't write any of this in the script because I just want to speak from the heart. So apologies if things are a little more rambly than the rest of the video, but that said, I think Anthrocon was one of the best weekends of my life. I spent the entire time on the way home in the past few days trying to figure out what I'm gonna say here. And I still don't think I have enough words to properly encapsulate how much this weekend meant to me. I got to see so many friends that I've known for so long, and I finally got to give them the hugs they deserve. And it was just so cool to hang out with everybody and see people that watch my content and like, see how excited they were to run up and meet me. And the new friends I made over the weekend, like they're, oh man. I just don't even know what to say other than it was the best weekend of my life. It is absolutely a con I will be back to, hopefully next year. And just the vibe of the con was completely different from anyone I've ever been to. Normally when you attend a con, it's in the convention space and maybe the hotel. But this, this was downtown Pittsburgh as well. That was part of the con space. I saw furries just hanging out, casually walking around everywhere. It felt like a little furry city, honestly. <laughs> and just, there was something for everybody and there was always something to do, but it never felt overwhelming. With smaller cons, you have a lot of downtime and sometimes you kind of just run out of things to do, so you just vibe for a little bit, but Anthrocon didn't have this problem. But on the other hand, if you wanted to go vibe, you could. There were plenty of spaces that you could just go vibe for a little bit with friends, or go back to your hotel and just spend some time. This was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had, and it was everything I was hoping it would be. Everything I was anxious about just melted away. It was just like meeting old friends and just getting to know them so much better on a more personal level in person and just building those bonds so much more. And for anyone watching this that got to come up and say hi, just thank you so much because that also made that experience so special. Doing this online behind a screen, sometimes you kind of forget that there's actual people there listening to what you do and just getting to meet you guys, give hugs, take pictures together and everything just really brought that all together. And having people give me things, obviously like you know, that's not a staple, you don't have to give me things, but like, just the fact, like, the wafer things were so good, and a couple of people gave me stickers of their Sona, and the gift art, the doodles, man, just the, the, the doodles. The fact that one of them was about graduation is what touched me the most, and it was one of the first things I read when they handed me that, and it just, it just really struck a chord, cause like, that was a big moment in my life, and Somebody who is arguably a stranger is congratulating me for it in the form of art. And I just, I, yeah, this was just one of the most amazing weekends of my life. And I cannot wait for AC 2025, because you bet I'm going to be there. <laughs> anyway, back to the scripted portion. So, yeah, thanks for listening to me ramble. Hopefully editing Misha makes this sound a lot more coherent than it was. <laughs> Lastly, would I recommend this con to people? A million times, yes. This con was a whole nother experience than anything I've ever done. As I said before, the heart of downtown Pittsburgh felt like an extension of the con space, and it was just as lively as the convention center at times. Pittsburgh really 
really supports the hell out of this convention, and that shows in various ways. Hell, one of the events was a block party. They shut down roads for us. This was a con that had everything. Hell, I managed to miss every single panel on accident and still had the absolute best time of my life. There was always something to do, and you were always going to be busy, but it never felt like too much. I will caution that if this is your first con, it might be a little bit overwhelming at first, but you'll make friends and unbreakable bonds by the end of it, and you'll feel a connection to this community like no other. I recommend Anthrocon with my full chest. This is a con you have to experience at least once if you're a furry. So we're to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you've watched this far. I'm genuinely blown away by all the love and support I get in the comments and, well, now in person. And just a quick thank you once again to my roommates and Anthrocon staff for making the weekend go so well. And thank you so much for anybody that came up to me in person and just, you know, showed all the love and support. And that just, that just means the world to me. Thank you so much to Harlow for the sweets. Thank you to Renby for the, the art that you did. That, that oh man, that, <laughs> that one got me. Um, yeah, just thank you so much to everybody. Thank you to Solace for letting me stay the night that night, uh, the last night because I wouldn't have had anywhere to go. And just for all the friends that I met at this con, thank you so much for making it, just making the weekend that much more special. But as you can see, I'm home now, so I'm gonna go to bed. But thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.